Excuse me, right here. One question, please. One question. So this is this sort of thing is the kind of thing I think that we should have been paying a lot more attention to in years earlier. Genetics. What can it be? And it also allows people in colleges, professors in colleges, to do things like I don't know, redefine you know the, the biological reality of gender and pretend it doesn't exist. This has long-term ramifications that I don't think we're thinking through. And, and most people sort of in our world are like, ah, you know, it's crazy, but it'll go away. It won't go away. If your children grow up learning that there's no actual distinction between men and women, what does that mean long-term? The hips on the drag A drag diva duo known as the Shear Sisters will be reading to the kids on June 19th as part of the library celebrating LGBT Pride Month. Library story time for little kids, not exactly where you'd expect to find controversy, but a plan to have drag queens tell stories that a Cherry Hill library has people talking. This one is called Worm Loves Worm. Talking, singing, and reading. We can both be grooms. To an audience of preschoolers, toddlers, and their caregivers. Well, story time at the Millennium Library today was led by Drag Queens. These words make her little sister very sad and she starts to cry. That is so not nice. So when the head of a prestigious North London school announced this week that he's consulting pupils and parents about a gender-neutral uniform, allowing all pupils to choose trousers or skirts, it sounded like progress to me. In fact, it's a national thing. Who wants to be a drag queen when they grow up? But yeah, this is a, sort of a new thing that's happening, a popping up in public libraries across the Fruited Plain. And uh, it's actually happening in my neighborhood library in Brooklyn. But we all benefit from living in a society which leaves behind the oppressive, strict gender norms of the past and recognizes that gender can be fluid and ever-changing. Of your um, argument is that you should all be a bit relaxed about gender and accept that now in this day and age your identified gender does not necessarily match your physical characteristics. Because again, this is all for the sake of inclusivity and diversity. Sure, doing sure. This. Yeah. And um, so I asked, I, I said, well, what about um, what about uh, ministers? Would you allow a minister to come in and read a, a Bible story for for Storybook Hour? And uh, they said, no, they would not do that. Uh, and sometimes it just seems things are a little out of balance on these, <laughs> doesn't it? Macho men under attack at college campuses across the country, now encouraging men to be less manly with courses to fight toxic masculinity. Well, on a day meant to honor our fallen heroes, one website, Vox.com, instead was smearing our Marines as fraternity members with a toxic masculinity problem. As my friend Matt Walsh wrote on Twitter, call me crazy, but I'm pretty sure the Marine Corps is supposed to be both masculine and toxic. But these are the kind of people who want our Marines to prance around and to battle wearing high heels and camo rompers. You're taking a live look at Boise from the Red Lion Hotel. Rompers have become a staple in women's fashion. The cute one-piece outfit, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. But what about rompers for men? No. <laughs> These images and video of grown men in the pattern onesies are blowing up social media. It's a one-piece garment like women and babies wear. Men, why would you ever want to engage in I mean, this is it? ridiculous. What, the baby version. What, yeah, what, what grown man is going to wear this? You, you wear that out in public? You wear that in public. Okay. Stuart Ledbetter joins us with a look at what else is ahead in the next half hour. Hi, Stu. 
I, I still can't get over that, that last, that Romkin thing. I just, it's just wrong. I got a friend with a daughter at an American university, a daughter who's rooming with another woman who has a and that is completely understood, that is fine. And I, he, as a father, finds that a bit strange, but this is where we are. This story has gone viral. Vinny, 23 years of age, has already spent tens of thousands of dollars why? In hopes to transform into a genderless alien. All right, in a society that values youth and beauty, getting cosmetic procedures is nothing new. But there are some who take it to the extreme. Now, our next guest so is on a mission to have the perfect physique. Like the man who's known as the human Ken doll. I'm known in the media as the human Ken doll. I spent $170,000 on 152 cosmetic procedures. I think I look amazing and all. So it's always exciting to see what uh, new modifications people have come up with to sort of engineer themselves to look like what uh, society would say would be the typical ideal. You look very different, so we have to ask why you've done it. Justin recently met the real-life Barbie, 21-year-old Valerie Lakanova from Russia. Right. And there are a few things that need to be fixed. It is an ongoing process to look good. And uh, now we live in a very uh, demand society. <laughs> yes. And I'd like to be the best that I can possibly in my body can allow me to be. Just the availability and the control to be able to manipulate my body and change it to sculpt it, I guess, uh, became a form of art for me. Okay. So we have a lot of fun kind of working through our, our binary categories. So welcome to my world where nothing makes sense anymore. So this is the subject now. There are 650,000 transgender people in this country. That accounts for 1% of the population. Of that 1%, the minutest amount of number are children. And, to, and to, to change our schools, to change the landscape of this country for a handful of people when there is no proof that we need to do that, I find astonishing. And people are using this as an identifier as much as you might call yourself a man or a woman. Kids are saying, I'm agender. Let kids develop, let, let them, leave them to their own devices and let them be what they need to be. This is, I think this is terrifying. I think it's dangerous because we, we, could, we could be pushing kids into a gender corridor where they, they're told, it doesn't matter whether you're a man or woman, it doesn't matter what you Before I bring and the, the rest of you in. Them. The other thing that's kind of fun about this field is it is the most deconstructionist thing I've ever run into. If you want a field where it's just, you're never gonna get your head wrapped around everything, this is it. More into a uh, gender non-binary. So you want to be sexless? Yeah, I looked into removing my genitals completely with um, different doctors, like a sexual unassignment. People are curious. People want to know what's going on. When somebody is assigned male, and that's the way the lingo works in my world, you are assigned a sex at birth. When you're assigned male at birth, but you grow up, and this is not what we're thinking of as male. But my concern is the extraordinary increase in figures, that the, the attitude that people like you perhaps, without realizing, are fostering. So let me run you through some of the figures. The number of under 18s referred to that service in 2016 to 2017 was 2016. Okay? The number of under 18s referred in 2009 2010 was 97. Now, although I'm quite good at maths, I haven't got Diane Abbott here with me to work <laughs> out what percentage that is, but that's quite, quite an uptick. Okay, so here we are now watching development collide with something, you know, when we, we, we see adults, we sort of, I think to some extent we go, okay, that's okay, you can do what you want, and even if I'm uncomfortable, it's still you, you're all grown up, whatever. What about a 12-year-old? Now back it up, what about an 8-year-old? Here's the breakdown. 21, for 2016, 2017, 21 were 5-year-olds, 9 were 4-year-olds, and 1 was a 3-year-old. I'm going to keep backing it up. I have children as young as three that come into my office with their families where the family question is, Junior here is saying 
that they are a gender that I don't think of them as, what should I do? Three. So we need you, but when you have a three-year-old embarking on possibly gender identity issues, well, you're a mum, you're a... I mean, it is utter copplers, to choose an I've, unfortunate word. It is utterly I've, I've already, wrong. I've already... This is different. You, know, yeah. you go through gender assignment, reassignment, I mean, you know, removing your Adam's apple, feminizing your face, or making it more masculine, removing breasts, adding breasts, genitalia. But when you get into removing nipples and and belly buttons, that's sort of... And trying to remove any genitalia at all, it's, it's such a... Un this is different. You know, that's the part of the reason why you'll see my, my topic area here says gender re slash evolution, because for me this is, are we talking about evolution? Are we talking about a revolution? What is this? 97 to 2000. Is that because it wasn't acceptable to be referred, yeah. and it is now? Or is it because actually somehow we've put another phenomenon into society and said, yeah, this is okay. Yeah. But this is like brain busting material for a lot of us because this is not how we understand the world. And so it is a huge shift. Remember, sex is usually between your legs. Gender is between your ears, right? It's, Amen. It's rooted in the brain. Yes, thank but, you. But, they're all, but the brain is also very, very complex. And we have to see, see what is this really about? And now we know that we can actually do what's called gene drive. But if you're messing with bacteria, if you're messing with rapidly reproducing microorganisms or even insects and so on, why you could totally alter evolution now and in, do it in, in one generation. In one generation, or certainly in a matter of weeks to months or years, depending on if you release it into nature. And completely destroy natural processes and food chains and other things as well. Some call this directed evolution. Designer babies. Do you want a boy? Do you want a girl? Now you can order up. We found more Colorado parents are making that controversial choice. And more doctors are offering it, using technology to guarantee you get the gender you want. Researchers have succeeded in creating five new synthetic yeast chromosomes, the fundamental building blocks of all living organisms. Would you choose? No, not in a million years. Yes, I would have had a boy first. No, I think that you should kind of let nature take its course. But more parents are manipulating mother nature, effectively buying the sex of the baby they want. Although this type of sex selection is not legal in many countries, Canada, Australia, China, in the United States, it's not even regulated. Does this allow you to buy a daughter? Yes, I think the answer to that is yes. But in California, Dr. Steinberg says he already offers eye color choice investigationally. We see gender selection as the very, very base of the science behind genetic selectivity, genetic screening, genetic purification. That makes a lot of people wonder if choosing a boy or a girl is a slippery slope. I don't know if we should be making decisions that maybe we weren't meant to make. What, what do you think about MTV giving awards to people, um, kind of eliminating the gender? Like, I don't know. The gender? Eliminating the best women, best female. Uh, I don't. I don't think MTV's opinion matters. For Sorry, it's, it's just not. It's not really a, a cultural music thing. It used to be. You kind of die with the real world. I started interning at MTV in 1997 through 98, and this was in 19. Yeah, 19. I think about 1998 actually is when I had my major first experience. As a television producer who was Dave Chappelle's standing, which means I did his rehearsals season one or two of Chappelle's show, I saw what happened to Dave. Dave used to give me advice all the time. And one of the key things he told me was, no matter how much money they offer you, and he said they, as he pointed in my chest, he said never forget who you are or where you come from. So for me and the fellas around me, it was all fun, but we did not know that we were a part of a system. And my vice president would always tell me, he would always pull me out from the bunch and say, D. Brad, look at the big picture. I thought the big picture was black America. I had no idea that the big picture was being a part of this system. Whatever has happened in urban America as far as the perception on television and film, I was basically the fly on the wall. That's why this brother is so correct. There you go, was so correct when he says we are at war. And I know it's somewhat difficult to believe that a war can be anything other than physical, but it is. 
And him and Charlie Murphy would tell me the same things all the time. And then I got it. This is a war. But with, and once you reach a certain level within that weapon of mass destruction, you have to give something up. I reached a certain level at the, in that station. So it reached a certain point where now it's time for them to introduce me to the inner workings of this, of this monster that's, that's created. And so I literally lived the devil taking me up the mountain and saying, you can go to the left, you can have all of this. And it was, I was there. Because you say, uh, the, the cover of Forbes, how to cheat death. <laughs> we, uh, and you think we're going to live in... The technique is called gene editing. We got time. We got National Geographic. Think this through. I mean, this is going to completely alter the world that we live in. They're just kind of playing around, but this stuff has consequences long term, for sure.